Here we are in bliss and bliss can do so many things that I have never tried and have no idea what they do. So, you know, it might behoove me to read the manual and learn how to use all these other things. But honestly, I just, I bought it for multi-sampling my virtual instruments and that's just all I'm using it for. Okay. So to get into the part where you do your multi-sampling, you click on edit right here, this edit button. And then you load your virtual instrument into Bliss. So I'm using Bliss in standalone mode right now. You can load it into your DAW um, as a plugin. I have not tried that. Um, I'm just using it in standalone mode just because it's easier. I don't have to go into Cubase and load it and then load my VSTs into it. So anyway, the thinking of Bliss is that you load your virtual instrument into Bliss and then you do your sampling right in Bliss. So you go to the sampling menu and you go load instrument and you browse to where your virtual instruments live. So I use Cubase. They're saved in a Steinberg folder called VST plugins. And there's also a couple other locations too, but I'm just kind of default in this one right now. So I don't know where you store your VSTs. You know where they are. If you don't, you can use Google and find out where you keep your VSTs. Okay. So anyway, some of my VSTs are here. So I'm going to just choose Omnisphere. We're going to play with Omnisphere. It's one of my favorite um, uh, synthesizer packages. Um, okay, so here's Omnisphere. And it literally loads the VST, the virtual instrument, right into Bliss, just like you would in a DAW. All right. So I've been like methodically going through this list called Textures Playable. And uh, I just, I love these. They're just so good. So I'm about like down here in the F's <laughs> and I've been like going through all of these and sampling all the ones I love. So anyway, let's just play with floating consciousness right now, just for fun. So I'm going to hit these notes on my MIDI keyboard right here. Just kind of test it out. And what I found is that every patch on these synths kind of needs a little different treatment inside of bliss. So Omnisphere has a lot of velocity layers. I've played patches in Omnisphere that had up to five velocity layers. So I'm just going to barely touch the key. And I can hear there's a really low velocity layer there. And I can hit it a little harder. There's that one. And then if I hit it really hard, it goes into that higher range. So I'm going to guess that we've got about three velocity layers here. And you could overshoot it and record five velocity layers. You'll just create more samples, but I'm cool with three. And also I see that when I take my finger off of the key, two, three, there's about three seconds of release there. Okay, so that's just a little bit of research in my mind before I go in to the sampling screen. Okay, so click on sampling menu up there and then go to sample instrument and this is where you make your choices um, i've found in the version of bliss which i'm using here which is 1.8 that this preset menu does not work so ignore that <laughs> um, some of these are self-explanatory some are a little different so i'm just going to go through all of these here's where you can choose whether you're doing stereo or mono or whether you just want left or right or auto so I keep it on stereo. Uh, the normalized menu, kind of self, self-explanatory. self It'll set a maximum volume. Um, I keep mine at minus three, um, just because I'm sampling a lot of different synths and samplers and sounds and drums. And I've just found that minus three is kind of safe. Note range is obviously where you set how much you want to sample. So with three to seven, I'm getting what, how many 
octaves is that? Uh, four octaves, right? Five octaves, four octaves. Anyway, so if you just wanted one octave, you would set that there. So you click on this and you choose what you want as a starting and what you want as an ending. I've done C3 to C7, sorry, C minus three to C7 for months. And I've, it's like five octaves or whatever it is. Okay, intervals. Now this is key. So when you're using a multi-sample set, the point is to have as many samples as you can. So are you doing every key? Are you doing every fifth key? Are you doing one per octave? And, you know, it's, it's just key to note that the fewer intervals you sample at, the more fidelity from the original VST, the, the original virtual instrument, you're going to have when you're playing back. So if you're in modular playing these off of the disting, and you're not stretching notes into the next sample because you've only done two per octave, it's not going to sound as good and as real as if you record every note. But the point is, yes, you are going to make more samples. But look at this, like five octaves with one sample every note. We're only recording 49 samples at 82 megs. And I assume you've put like a 128 gig card in your disting for 29 bucks, which you got off of Amazon. So, you know, file size isn't really an issue here. I would let it rip and sample as many as you can. So velocity range, um, I would keep at zero to 127 so we can get the whole range. And then intervals, these are the velocity layers. We had guessed listening to that keyboard sample that there were three velocity layers. There might be more, but I'm, I'm fine with three. So watch, watch our file size estimations here. With three velocity layers in this sample set, there's going to be three samples per key. Every interval, there's going to be three samples in between these velocity layers to trigger those three different velocity layers, right? So 147 samples now at 250 megs, approximately. So, you know, to me, that's not a big deal. I've got a big memory card in there. I'm not sweating it. I'm doing this for quality. Um, but just understand that this is how it stacks up. Okay, so tempo sync um, means that if it's on this, it means that you're getting the beats per minute tempo from the host software. Like if you're running it inside your DAW. In this case, I'm not. I'm just using it in standalone mode. But also, tempo sync for what I'm recording doesn't matter because I'm not recording a drum loop or something that is tempo synced. I'm just recording keyboard pads. So if you set it to free, then you can set your BPM here. Um, again, this doesn't matter for what I'm doing here, but if it does matter for what you're doing, you're going to want to experiment with that and find the right settings. Um, duration is the number of seconds of sampling for each sampled note. So how long it's being held down. So I'm playing on my keyboard here again. Two, three, four, five. Maybe do I want five seconds? Uh, maybe I'm working with super long gates. And I want to have nice things ringing out. Maybe I'm just doing simple little teeny hits and three seconds is plenty. That's up to you. You're going to have to make those calls. Same with tail. So this is only available if the crossfade loop is off. So if you're making loops and you want your loops to have a nice crossfade in between and have them be loopable, this is another thing that I'm, I'm not doing here because I'm just doing single hits. But if you're going to be making loops, then that's something which you're going to want to play with too. So tail in this instance is after I let go of the key, Listen really carefully. Two, three, four. Maybe there's four seconds of ring out there. That's what I set in Omnisphere as the release. So you can change that and, and you want to make that right here so that you're not cutting your sample off. So I'm going to, I'm going to set my tail to, let's make it to three seconds. All right. So my duration is three seconds. My tail is three seconds. Again, loop doesn't matter here for what I'm doing. 
I am going to do this fade out and uh, that's just going to make a nice um, fade out at the end of the sample. And this times two oversampling, I can't quite figure out. I read in the manual that it applies twice the current sample when sampling. And uh, so you're maybe getting a better quality sample. I don't know. My machine doesn't have a problem with it, so I've just always kept it on. Um, unload plugin after sampling, um, I've kept that off um, just because sometimes I want to go back and record another, another patch. Name is what the WAV files are going to come in named like. So um, I'm just going to call it float. Float C O N S C. All right. And that'll trigger my memory enough that it's 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 that one. Float conch. All right. So once I hit OK, it's gonna rip through five octaves with three with three velocity layers per sample. All right. And this is why I love doing this in software as opposed to plugging in the front of the disting and doing it um, doing it externally. Watch this. I'm going to let this play in real time just to show you how quickly this happens. This is, this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this in software is because plugging in to the front of the disting, coming out your audio card, um, doing it analog like that. I just, I felt like there was a cleaner, more pure way to get, you know, digital samples from a virtual instrument was, was to stay in the computer and do it through software. And I did find a few other options and I tried their demo versions and I really think that Bliss is the way. No, they are not paying me to say that. I did buy the software on my own. I spent the $100, I bought Bliss. Um, and I, I think this is the way to go, at least for right now. So we're collecting 140 samples here, 147. And if any of you have sampled into the front of the disting from hardware, you know that five octaves of samples with three velocity layers takes a long time. So this is just like awesome. And I could have sped this up to get us through this, but I, I think it's a good test just to see, see how long it does take. It's pretty awesome. I think this has been like a minute. All right, so we're coming in to finished. And, you know, think too that if you were only doing one velocity layer, this would have just like banged out. And we'll do that too. All right, so done. So now you have all of your samples here. And it shows their velocity range. For example, here's C sharp 3. 0 to 42, 43 to 85 and 86 to 127. So there's the three velocity layers for C sharp three, right? And here's all of your samples. I'm just scrolling down here. So if you select all, I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do Control A on Mac, it's Command A. And then go to Zone and Export Zones to Wave. And you can go File and Export program and that works too but the file naming is completely screwy we'll talk about that in a minute so zone export zones to wave okay and now you choose where you're going to store this so i'm going to go to the desktop i'm going to do a folder here called multi samples and <laughs> This, this program's a little funny like this. So instead of going new folder, type your folder name there. So I'm gonna call it float, C-O-N-N-S-C here. Instead of doing new folder, that's basically gonna make a folder name in the root of my folder here. And it's gonna call it that, and it's gonna put all the WAV files into that. All right, save. And it just ripped all those samples into that folder. All right, so now let's go to that folder. 
let's let's look at what we made okay so here's the folder called float conch and there's all of our files done awesome you can see the three velocity layers per sample all right you can click on them and they'll play All right, and there's all of our WAV files. So the problem is that the way that it spits out these file names, Disting cannot read. And I thought I was like <laughs> solving the world's biggest problem by using Bliss and doing it all clean and keeping it digital like this and bringing in my WAV files. But then I realized I was creating a ton of work for myself by having to go in and change all these file names to make them compatible for the disting EX. So this is where the beautiful thing happened. I emailed Andrew Osler, Oz, um, from Expert Sleepers, who's just such a gentleman and such a great guy. And I was telling him what the problem was. Um, and he said, Jono, I'm going to write a Python script for you. And in 15 minutes, he sent me these scripts, which is so cool. So you do have to install Python on your computer. Mac, Windows, um, you can find an installer for Python on your computer. And these are the scripts which you run. So on Windows, all I do is I double click on this script and it runs. On Mac, um, I know you double click on it and then you have to hit run in Python. But either way, it's super easy. So float consciousness, the sample set, I recorded three velocity layers per sample. So I'm going to take the, the script which deals with three velocity layers. Here's the one for one, where you just have one. I didn't build one for two because I never do two. Um, and here's one for four and for five velocity layers. We know that there's three velocity layers per sample. So I'm going to work with the one which fixes three velocity layers, which is this one. So I'm going to copy it. See so velocity three. I'm going to go into float conch. I'm going to paste it in there. Because when I'm done, I'm just going to throw it away. So watch this. I'm going to double click on this, and it's going to rename all of these files to be compatible with the disting EX. Boom. Just like that. So the way that Andrew Osler from Expert Sleepers um, does his file naming is that when you've got multiple velocity layers, he wants them named with underscore v1, underscore v2, right? And with the file naming like this, you know, no spaces, underscore a, sharp, three, underscore velocity layer, da, da, da. This was all the stuff that was killing me to rename by hand and use file renamers. So now I've just got this script that you can double click on. So that's linked below to the GitHub where Andrew posted them and uh, life is good. Okay, so I'm just going to throw it away. And this folder called float conch, if you drop this on your disting EX card and navigate to it using the poly multi sample algorithm on your disting, these are going to work awesome. And all the inputs and the trigger inputs on the disting EX are velocity sensitive. So if you're using a VCA and you're using different voltages in your triggers, you are going to hit these different samples per note. So that's, that's pretty exciting. And we have polyphony in your rack. It's a big deal. All right, let's do another one and just do one velocity layer. So I'm back in Bliss, and I'm going to go back and do another set. So I go Sampling, Open Instrument Editor. So this opens up Omnisphere again. Let's just check out some of these other ones. So 
just amazing. Okay, there's a nice one. Okay, so we want this one called Full Bandwidth. All right. And actually, as I play it, I hear that there really aren't other velocity layers. I'm hitting it really hard, and I'm hitting it really soft, and it just triggers the same sound. So there aren't multiple velocity layers. So this is perfect for an example of single velocity layers. Okay, so we're going to do this one really quickly. Sampling, sample instrument. Same note range, same velocity range, same intervals. I'm doing it every key, but I'm going to take the velocity intervals down to just one. So just one sample per note. Okay. Hmm, that one's got a longer tail, so I'm going to change that to four. And otherwise, I'm leaving everything same. And I'm going to change the file name to full band. I'm just going to keep it like that. It's called bandwidth. I'm just going to keep it as band. So 115 megs for 49 samples. Here we go. So it's sampling our VST. See the difference of doing just one velocity layer? This is just amazing. Five octaves. Okay. All right. So you can see now, C3, C sharp 3, D3, D sharp 3. There's just one sample per key. Select all. Zone. Export zones to wave. Navigate back to that folder on my desktop. Make a folder called, or a file, <laughs> full band, save. And it was that fast. It just ripped all those WAV files into that folder. Go to that folder. Here's full band. There's all of our samples. And see it's 0 to 127 with each one, showing that there's only one velocity layer for each one. It's the full volume range in each sample. So take the velocity 1 script, copy, paste it into there, double click on it, script runs, all our file names are named perfectly. And throw that away. So that's the workflow right there. And you saw that. That took like one minute to record those off the VST and rename all those files. We're done. So now this folder, just like this one, can be just dropped right on your card. And you've got polyphonic multi-samples of this awesome synth pad from Omnisphere. Andrew Osler from Expert Sleepers. I'm just eternally grateful, man. Thank you so much for being such a generous and easy guy, man. He's like, Jono, I got you. I'm going to write this script. And uh, so I've encouraged him to make that script live. And it, it is live and available off of GitHub. So that's linked below. Um, and uh, yeah, again, Andrew, thank you so much. And to the makers of Bliss, um, also, you've just, you've done a great thing. The software is just, it's just awesome. All right. Thanks for watching.